please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Horn versus Mannion. Thank you, Ron. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Horn, you had a wild weekend three decades ago and now find yourself in court to prove that you are not the biological father of Ms. Mannion's 29-year-old son, Andrew. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You will meet him for the very first time in a moment, but say today's DNA test will prove you are not his dad. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Mannion, you admit to this wild weekend of sex, but claim you have no doubt that Mr. Horn is your son's biological father. That is correct. So, Mr. Horn, now you claim you received a shocking phone call five years ago. Tell the court what happened. Um, I was at work. I got a phone call from a family member who never calls me at work. Asked me if I remembered a certain name, which was her name, and I was like, um, you know how I was back then? I really don't have a clue who you're talking about. <laughs> and so she mentioned a couple of other names, and that kind of rung a bell and told me that she got a phone call from Mr. Haight saying that I might be his father. I got the phone number from my family member and I called Mr. Haight and kind of told him, I was like, you know, you do know how your mom is. I mean, she's like a railroad track. She's been laid all across America. Your Honor, so that is a lie. No that way. Is oh, 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 uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Let's try to be respectful, but I get your point. So it was your opinion that Ms. Mannion had been promiscuous? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And so you had the phone conversation and you basically told him... That I, there's no way I could be the father. Uh, Ms. Mannion? Yes, Your Honor. He called your son, and he basically said there's no possible way he could be his biological father. He is the father, because I was in another relationship, and uh, a paternity test did come out that the other, uh, the other guy was not the father. And there's only two people that I, I was with during that time. So there were two people you were with, and you said you had a DNA test on the other one, and so you feel like it has to be Mr. Horn from this point. And yes. That's okay, I want to understand how this all this started. We are at a party on the weekend at an apartment complex of a buddy of mine's. She showed up. I didn't have really have a clue who she was. We started chatting. She kept coming on to me. That I is found a lie. Out she was a friend of mine's girlfriend or dating. They were dating or whatever. He was in California. So she kept coming on to me. The more we drank, uh, I drank uh -huh. quite a bit. Passed out. I woke up to the best alarm clock ever. Oh, no, kind of no, 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 no. I do uh, not yeah. do that kind of stuff. Yes, you do. I'm sorry. No, I did not. I do not put myself out like that, ever. He was drunk. He yeah, came I was to me. drunk. He, he passed out. You took advantage no. of me. No. Oh, no. come on, woman. He woke me up. Let's talk about that. Somebody taking me to the car and talking to me and I reached over and kissed me. I'm like, excuse me, I have a boyfriend. Okay, so no, no, we no. don't know who like woke that. who up. Right. And because that's the evening you say you conceived your son. I only slept with uh, Mr. Horn twice. Okay. One that night and one the next day. And then from there, you basically moved on. You guys did not start a relationship. You didn't keep in touch. It was none of that. Not even uh, close. Did you ever hear she was pregnant? I found out that she was pregnant after she had the child. Um, I ran into the dude that she was dating at the time. He said he took a DNA test, but he never seen the results. So therefore, he could not be the father. I call it like I see it. She's a hoe. Okay. Okay. So there's okay. no way I could okay. be the dad. Uh, okay. We okay. got to come up with a new word. Just work with me here. All right. Ms. Mannion, once you realized you were pregnant, did you immediately think it was Mr. Horn's child? No, I did not. You thought it was someone else's. Yes. Okay. The and that's the man that you had tested. Well, I did not pay for it. Uh, uh, his family did. Did you bring copies of the DNA testing results? No, I did not. Anything to court as proof? I did not get the results. I know as he told me. I even called her family after this because the said dude that she thought was the father gave me the phone number because I was like, you know, if I got a kid, I want to be part of the kid's life. When I called, the grandmother answered the phone and I said who I was and the grandmother's like, are you sure that you're the father? So you knew at that point there was a question as to the paternity. Yes, ma'am. I was, I'll admit, I was, uh, I used to drink a lot and used to drug a lot. 
I was in no case to, you know, way to take care of a kid and a kid that probably wasn't even mine anyway, so I just let it go. Okay, so you thought someone else was the father. You had him take a DNA test, but you never saw the results. Did you ever see Mr. Horn after that, Miss Mannion? No, I had no way to get a hold of him. All I know is my mother told me that he contacted them and even left his name, his phone number, for when my child gets older to contact them. Ms. Mannion, you are stating to the court that you do, in fact, agree with Mr. Horn's testimony that at some point he called a family member to inquire. Yes, he did. At that point, you say he even left his name and number. That is correct. And did you ever reach out to him after he left the name and number? No, my mother lost the number. They got his name and number and told you, but they never showed you. Yeah, they never showed me. Okay. I want to hear from your son. Your son, Andrew, is here. Ron, can you please, uh, grab Mr. Haight? Yes, ma'am. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Thank you for joining us today. No problem. We are here trying to get some answers for you. Who did your mother lead you to believe was your biological father from the beginning? Well, at first, I was with my grandparents for the first five years of my life. Okay. I considered them my mom and dad, and I kept calling her Christina. Okay. I ended up going to live with her at the age of five. Okay. And she was married at the time. Okay. And so I assumed that he could have been the father at that time. Okay. And at what point did you find out that he wasn't? Around the time that that relationship ended. How old were you then? Uh, 12. 12. So for the first five years of your life, you considered your grandmother and grandfather to be your mother and father, so you called them mom and dad. Correct. Then, when you went to live with your mother, she was married, and so then you thought your stepdad was your dad. Correct. And then when they broke up, that's when you realized he was not your father either. That is correct. What did your mother tell you at that point? I asked her who he was, and she gave me the name Kevin Horn the very first time. The first time you asked? The mm -hmm. first time I asked. And she had absolutely no doubt in her mind? She had no doubt in her mind. She didn't say it could be somebody else, too? No, she didn't. Just said, Kevin Horn? Yep. Mm -hmm. At that point, what did you do with that information? I stored it in memory. You stored it? So I could find a way to find him. Until you could find a way to find him. So when you gave him that information, Ms. Mannion, did you truly believe Mr. Horn was the father? Because you've admitted in court today that there possibly could be another man, but they told you the DNA test said it w proved it wasn't true, but you didn't see it. So did you ever think to maybe fill your son in and say, well, there also was another guy? Your Honor, the other guy did sign the birth certificate because he believed also that he was the father. I'll, the let me see that, Ron. Here you go, Your Honor. So, I, wait a minute. I, I'm sorry, Your Honor. My son's last name is my maiden name. Okay, so you gave what? your son your, your, your maiden last name. Yes, I did. The name of the father on the birth certificate, is it the same name of the man that had the test previously? Yes, it is. He signed the birth certificate before the test was done. So, Mr. Horn, you don't seem like you believe in this. Um, <laughs> is anybody actually in here believing this crap? So, Mr. Haight, did your mom ever say to you, Mr. Horn is one possibility, but there potentially was someone else? We had a test, but I, I never saw the results. Did she tell you that part of the story? Nope. When I went to get that birth certificate for an ID, uh -huh. it was the first time I found out that. You saw your birth certificate for the first time how old? Uh, 17, 18. So when you went to get your ID was the first time you ever seen your birth certificate? Correct. And when you looked at the name of the father listed on there, it you didn't know Kevin who... Kevin Horn. It wasn't Kevin Horn. Did you ask your mother? I did. And she said that there was a DNA test done and that he was not the father. It wasn't until recently that I actually started asking, where's this evidence? Bingo. Oh, That's please. what I'm talking about. 
he thought your father was his father. Then he thought your husband was his father. Uh, uh, then uh, you told him he was his father. Then in court, then you said there's another else. guy. I'm listening to this story. And at 29 years of age, I think we need to take a little bit more seriously the fact that he still really doesn't know who his biological father is. Uh, and as you stand here today and you so easily write that other guy off because he got tested he wasn't the father, I can't write him off because you don't have any proof. Yeah, you're right. So then that leaves him in a position where he can't fully accept that truth. Even if it is true, he can't fully accept it because he can't see the paperwork. I understand. Okay. Mr. Haight, what are you hoping for today? I'm hoping that I actually have found my father. So since you were 12 years old, you've been carrying the name Kevin Horn in the back of your mind. Correct. And today, this very moment, is the first time you've ever laid eyes on him. That is correct. Other than, uh, yeah. Other than that picture on the internet when I found the information. My grandmother lost all the information that he gave her. So I uh, did investigative work myself to find him. Good for you. And we've been talking for the last five years. You have? Found. Yeah, we have. Good. Um, the kid, I hate to keep calling him a kid because he's almost 30. <laughs> he's had a rough childhood, you know? And the thing that makes me the maddest most about it is the fact that she knew how to find me. She could have found me. I didn't and know if, how to if find him. If he out. is my son, I've lost 29 years of his life other than the last oh, few years please. that we've been able to I'm talk on the phone. That, that, so that you made poor choices that left you... Out yeah, one of them was having sex with you, but that's besides oh, the point. please. If that is my kid, you took 29 years of his life of not yeah. having a dad and so, being confused so, so, so for so why many did years. You disappear. Why did you? I've lived in Orlando, Florida, Florida did, for the last no, 29 years. No, no. I didn't go why nowhere. Did you dis yeah, you did. You got the information and you disappeared. Why didn't you call and contact him? Because your kids? mom even. Why? Or, no. Oh, come on. All right. So, my so like that, Miss Mannion. I get why you're upset. I mean, this is all really gone over your head. I mean. Literally, that just it, you are not it's grasping not. what really has happened. And what he's trying to say is when there was a question regarding the paternity, he made the phone call. Your family then informed him that there was another possible father, and it probably was because at that time you even said you believed it was the other guy's child. So when he got the information that it wasn't his, he left it alone, but I said, I'll leave my number if anything else changes. He thought he never got a call because nothing else changed. But what happened was, is his number got lost. Oh. See, I see what happened. Yeah, I didn't even see the number. I, I know, we know, you didn't see anything. Number. You have, no, really, Miss <laughs> Mannion, you really? have not seen it. Really? I get it. You have not no. seen it. That's why no. I'm here to try to make you understand that even though you do want to believe, and look, Mr. Horn has been slightly harsh today in his language, but I do understand what he's saying. What's wrong, Miss Mannion? Truth hurt. You need to calm down, Miss Mannion, because I have the results for you. Mr. Haight, yes. is there anything you'd like to say, sir? Because at the end of the day, this is about you. What would you like to say? Well, if you are the father, I would like to continue growing our relationship. Definitely. And if not, I would still like to just, we can go as a, uh, like, older brother type thing, I guess. <laughs> That's a much sweet. younger older brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you the results. Ron? Yeah. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Horn v. Mannion, when it comes to 29-year-old Andrew Haight, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Horn, you are his father. I told you. <laughs> I 
told you. We got this done, all right? Yeah. How do you feel? I'm very happy. I'm happy for you. You're a 29-year-old young man, and you know what? I see young men come in this courtroom that have never, ever known their father at all. That's one issue to deal with, and that is difficult. It's a complete different thing to every five to seven years somebody tell you somebody new is your dad. <laughs> yeah. That is confusing and heartbreaking. Yeah, it is. I know I can see it in your face, but I am so thankful that you all had the courage to come here today. No matter what happened, what we got wrong, you know, whose feelings got hurt, the point is, is we got to the truth. And now you can walk out of here and know that that name you've been entertaining since you were 12 years old, Kevin Horn, that really is your biological father. Yes, I can. I'm so happy. I'm glad you've already been getting to know one another, but now you can get to know one another even on the next level with clarity and that absolute knowing. And my grandkids. Amen to that. We got grandkids? Yes, we do. Oh, that's awesome. So, you all have a lot of good catching up to do, and I know these grandkids are gonna be so happy that they can say who their grandfather is, and I wish you all the very best of luck. Court is adjourned. Thank you.